I know I said I was going to take a break for a while, and I just couldn't do it. I came up with something to talk to you about. I have some other ideas that are going to be or come to fruition here within the next couple of weeks. At the end of this video, I'll tell you what those videos are going to be about. But today, I want to talk to you about, I, I came up with a list of 24 line items here to talk to you that are related to your safety and security and how you can avoid being a victim here in Ecuador. And as soon as I come back, I'll get started on it. Hey! Hello there. So I sat down and started thinking about, you know, what does it take to be safe and secure here? Okay, you know, everybody hears about petty crime and the things that happen here in Monta, Cuenca, Quito, Guayaquil, all of Ecuador. This country is not any different than any other country in the world. There's crime here just like anywhere else. The crime here is different though. It's very different. Petty people here are desperate for money and they'll do whatever it takes to get a dollar from you or two. Some people will take your life to get your cell phone or your watch off your arm. It's not, it doesn't happen very often. No, know that it's ever happened here in Monta. I know it, I'm sure it has. I know it has, as a matter of fact, I just don't have any specific case to tell you about. But anyway, it happens. And you know, the poverty is so abundant here. There are so many people that are desperate. You know, minimum wage is $425 a month. What a shame that is that low, but it, that, it is what it is. So anyway, I'm gonna get started. All right, number one, if you walk into a neighborhood and you don't see anybody around, get out. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong neighborhood. If you walk down the street, and you're, and especially if it's in the evening time, I hope that you have enough common sense to don't go down a street that you don't know in the dark. If you don't have enough common sense to know that you shouldn't do that, then by all means take off. Or better yet, don't come here because we don't want you here as a victim. If you walk into a neighborhood and you only, or you are the only person around, you're in the wrong place. You need to get out. Number two, you heard this before, and I can't say this enough. I, I will say this until I'm blue in the face. Folks, don't flash your money or your jewelry when you're out in a crowd. Don't do it. There are people, especially in crowded places like the mall or the, the market, the Mercado Central, the Nueve Tarqui Marketplace, the big open marketplace, where you go there on a weekend, there'll be thousands of people walking around. The fish market. Don't pull out a big wad of cash, okay? We're gonna talk about carrying money here in a minute, but don't pick out a big, don't pull out a big old wad of cash. And especially if you go to those places, leave your jewelry at home, you know? I, I have, not that I'm a, you know, I don't wanna brag or anything, but I have a, somebody gave me this watch. A friend of mine gave me this watch. It's a really nice watch. I, I can't really tell you the story behind it. It's an Invicta. It's a big watch, it's a big flashy watch. Guess where this watch lives? It lives right here in my drawer. Every once in a while I'd look down at it and think, oh man, what a nice watch. If I was living in the States, it'd be on my arm. You don't want to go outside in crowded places with jewelry like that on, diamond rings, ladies. Sorry, leave your fancy diamond rings at home. Don't flash that stuff in public. You'll end up losing it. You could end up losing it. Number three, you've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it even more. Don't give to beggars. If you do, and you're just so compelled to do it, and you just can't help it, give them a quarter, and then move on. Don't stand there and expect them to praise you because you gave them a quarter or a dollar. Don't expect it, because you're not going to get that, okay? Move on. The best thing to do is don't, don't give them money, because, and I'll tell you why. Most of the beggars here are Venezuelans. They're not Ecuadorians. The Ecuadorian people are way too resourceful. And if they are down and out, they're going to go find some kind of work to do. And they're going to earn money. They're not going to rob you. They're not out looking to rob you. There are Ecuadorians here that do that kind of stuff. But these beggars that you see on the streets around here, most of them are Venezuelans. And if you give them a dollar, they'll want two dollars. You give them two, they'll want three or four. And if you make them mad, they'll follow you and beat the crap out of you. Or worse. Don't, don't invite them into your house. Don't socialize with them. Don't try to be their best buddy or their salvation in the name of God. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're making it hard on the rest of us expats that are living here. 
Leave the beggars alone. I know it sounds cold, but I mean, I've given money to them, but I give them a dollar and I leave. If you don't want to give them anything, just put your hand up and say, Lo siento. Shake your head no and say, Lo siento. Say, No, lo siento. Lo siento, no. Shake your head no and keep on going. Don't stop to engage them. Once you do that, you're, you're in trouble. Number four, don't stop, don't stop and talk to two people that approach you on a motorcycle. Even one by himself or herself on a motorcycle. One of the things they like to do is they'll, they'll stop and engage conversation with you. Ask, sound like they're asking you a question. It's all in Spanish. The last thing you want to do is pull your phone out and try to use Google Translate. You'll see that motorcycle going down the road with your phone. I was going to say, you'll see your phone going down the road with that motorcycle and the two people on it. Or worse, you'll see your wallet or anything else of value that you might have. If you get approached by people on a motorcycle, walk the other way. Turn and go the other way. Go to where they're not going. If you're close to a business, duck into the business. It doesn't happen very often, but it happens. Number five, if you're carrying a backpack and you're out in a crowd, carry it on your chest. Don't carry it behind you. It's amazing how people can open up your backpack and you not even know it. You know, if you're walking around with a laptop in it or your camera or something or your cell phone or money, somebody will come up behind you and go through that backpack and you won't even know it. You'll go take it off your back and notice how light it is. Keep your backpack on your front side if you have to have one with you when you're in a crowd. For the, for the purpose of this video, when I say a crowd, I'm talking about like in the mall where there's lots of people around, the central market, the Nuevi Tarki Corral, the other shopping mall, any place where there's a crowd, there's the fish market, any place where there's a crowd. So from now on, when I say the crowd, that's what I'm talking about. Carry your backpack up front. Okay, all right? Make sure it's zipped up and hang on to it. Number six, when you get cash out of the ATM machine, especially in the mall, take a taxi home. Don't be brave. Take a taxi home. Because usually when I get cash out of the ATM machine, I'm getting enough cash to last me for a while and then I go straight to a taxi and go home okay and then I leave that cash at home we'll cover that some more in a minute but when you're in the mall especially if it's crowded and you go into the ATM machine which by the way folks I suggest if you go to the ATM machine go to the one in the mall you know don't go to the one on the street unless you're there in a taxi or a car and you can get out get your money get back in your car your taxi and go but especially in the mall Take a taxi home. That was number six. Number seven, if you need to take a lot of a load of cash out of the bank, okay, to make a purchase like buying a car, or if you, you know, they are, or you need, you know, to pay rent, big chunk of rent or whatever, and if they offer you an escort home, take it, okay, take it, even if it costs you a couple bucks, take it. There was a lady here right after I came here that took thirty thousand dollars out of Banco Pacifico in the mall to come and pay down on a property or something. I don't know really what the exact reason was. And they offered her an escort and she said, no, it's okay. And so she took a taxi home. Well, guess what? Somebody followed her and as soon as she got out of the taxi, they robbed her and they took her 30 grand. On top of that, they took her cell phone, her purse, everything. They took her money. Stupid. If somebody offers you a ride, an escort, Take it, by all means. Even if you see a cop on the street, you can probably pay them 20 bucks and they'll follow you wherever you need them to follow you. Just don't, don't, be, don't be stupid like that, okay? If you're in a crowd, like Nuevi Tarki or the Mercado Central, keep your cell phone in your pocket, especially like your front pocket. Don't carry things that will stick out of your pockets. And more importantly, don't flash a bunch of money. I've already talked about that. Keep your cell phone in your front pocket, okay? That's not to say that you can't get pickpocketed and lose it from your front pocket, but you got a much stronger chance of losing it if you leave it in your back pocket and it's sticking out of your back pocket. I'm just as guilty as the next one. I've done that myself. But don't do that. Keep your cell phone in your front pocket if you must take it with you. I'm, I'm discovering amazingly how easy it is to go somewhere in this town without my cell phone and just leave it home. If I'm going like to the mall and back, I don't even bother to take it. Why take the chance? Number nine, don't walk the streets alone at night. Don't even walk the streets at night if you're with somebody. One of my expat friends just a few weeks ago 
took his girlfriend home at midnight, walked from this building down to a building right down the street from here. She's carrying a purse. The guy comes up to him, approaches him, he has a knife, he takes the purse. Simple as that. Don't walk around at night alone, okay? Number 10, if a taxi driver tells you, don't go down that street, even in the daytime, listen to him. My buddy Juan Zambrano told me about a couple of streets and showed them to me. He said, don't go down those streets. There's people down there that are unemployed. There's drug addicts, there's drug dealers, all kinds of bad people. If, they, if anybody tells you, don't go down that street, by God, don't go down that street. It's that simple. I don't care how safe and secure you think you are. Just don't do it, okay? They know what they're talking about. Number 11, if you're driving a car, this is a good one. If you're driving a car and all of a sudden a rock comes flying through your window, keep going. Don't stop to investigate, folks. They throw that rock to get your attention, to get you to stop, and then they're going to rob you. That happened right down the street here. I could throw a rock from the roof of my building to where this happened to my dentist's wife. A rock came through her window. She kept on going. I guarantee you. And it's a safe neighborhood right back here. Sort of safe. Most of it is. If you get a rock thrown through your car window, keep on going. Go somewhere away from the scene and then figure out what happened. Main thing, don't stop. Number 12, when you're out and about and you have even the smallest feeling of uncertainty, get a taxi and go home. That's pretty straightforward. Number 13, if you live in a building that has security guards, make them your best friend, okay? Make them your best friend and you become their best friend. When they do something nice for you, like a product bring or like protect a package for you or deliver something to you, reward them. Give them a dollar or two dollars, you know? Or three. Two or three dollars goes a long way for these guys. They're making minimum wage or less. I mean, I oh my God, I, my guys here, they, they, they don't make a lot of money off me, but I don't ask them to do anything for me that I don't give them some kind of financial reward. I don't have to give them a lot of money, but it's like I needed a light bulb replaced yesterday, and Christian, our, my, our building maintenance guy here, I gave him 20 bucks and said, go to Mega Kiwi and get this replacement LED light bulb for me and come put it in for me. It cost him $7 for the light bulb and I paid him to go and get it and come back and install it for me because he had to wire it in. That helped me and helped him and he made $13 on the deal. I guarantee you he had lunch for the rest of the week. So help him out, you know, and they will take good care of you. When I come walking down the street here where I live and the guards see me on the cameras, they always open the gate for me downstairs so I don't have to walk up the stairs. And a lot of times when I go down to Lenovia and have a burger, a lot of times I'll pick one up for one of them, whoever's working the desk that night. And I'll bring them a burger and fries and I should bring them a drink, but I don't, but I'll let them get their own. But they, well, they appreciate that because for them to go and spend six or seven dollars for a burger and fries is a, is a bit of a stretch for them when they're making ten bucks a day. So make them your friend and take care of them, okay? And they'll take care of you and they'll watch out for you. Get a small can of pepper spray and carry it with you when you're out and about. More importantly though, know how to use it, okay? I'll show you mine. I have this little can of pepper spray right here. I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it or not. I bought this when I was in Cuenca after I had my little encounter with my Venezuelan friend on the river walk. And I, I'm not, I've yet to spray it. But one thing about it, I notice about this particular can of spray, it's really easy to have the finger too close to the nozzle. And if you go to spray, I, you don't want pepper spray on your skin. I mean, you don't want it on your period. Because next thing you know, you're going to wipe your eyes, you touch your face, and you got pepper spray. That may be a bit of exaggeration, but I'll t I don't want to find out. This has a little latch on top, a little protective cover there that protects the trigger. So you don't accidentally, you know, set it off. But when I'm walking down the street with this in my hand, I usually have this in my hand, depending on the street that I go down. My thumb is up inside this thing right here, and I keep my finger down here below the lid. And I just carry it like that. And I had one guy that I thought for sure was after me, and he saw this thing and decided to leave me alone. So I'll get you one of these. It cost me six bucks. Okay? You can't bring it on the airplane with you, so you have to get them here. You get them in sporting goods stores. Number 
16. Don't carry any dangerous weapons like knives or guns. You may end up on the business end of one of them and you don't know what you're doing. Guys, I, people tell me, I'll get a machete. I'll carry a machete with me. I'm not going to carry a machete with me. Next thing you know, I'll be cut with it. Some people say carry a bat, carry a cane. They make a cane. I don't know if you can get it here. I have a friend in Quinka that has a cane that's made out of hard plastic. Maybe it's carbon fiber and it's plastic. And the handle, the back side of it is just like a hatchet. And the other side is a point. And you attach your hands over that. That can really become a really good defensive weapon if you're not afraid to use it. But don't carry stuff like that around with you. You don't even think about guns. You're not going to get a gun here anyway. That's a whole nother video talking about how to get a gun. I don't even want to deal with it. Number 17, be sure you have a doctor that you can call your primary care physician. You want to know why? In case you get hurt. <laughs> you need a doctor. You don't want to have to go to a hospital here. I wouldn't. I mean, I, it depends on how, you know, if I get attacked and get beat up, sure going to call Dr. Garcia and tell her, what do I do? How do I get help? Just have one in your pocket, okay? Maybe that's not that important. I don't know. Number 18, don't involve the police unless you are the victim. Other than that, stay away from them. They're not necessarily here to help you. You may find yourself sitting in a jail cell waiting for something to get done. I'm serious about that, folks. If you get called and somebody, the police are at your house and somebody tells you the police are here because of something that stupid that you did, avoid it. Don't, you know, don't get involved in them. If you're in a car accident and you're in a taxi and you're in an accident, you're a gringo. If you can, get out of that car and go away. Don't, don't get involved with the police. They'll blame everything on you. There, I'm sure there's going to be a lot to be said about that. I'm sure I'll get lots of comments and just bring them on, okay? Don't involve the police. Number 19, keep in touch with local friends. If something happens to you, you don't want to be alone. If something happens and you get hurt, you'll need resources for getting the help you need. Make an agreement with someone that you that will check on you on a regular basis if you on you if they haven't heard from you in a while, okay, in a reasonable period of time. Give them a key to your apartment. All right, so they can get in your residence in the event that you've been incapacitated. And, you know, that's like, we're, we're all here, a lot of us are here alone, I'm here alone, and something happens to me, and I become incapacitated here in my apartment, I would sure hope that somebody would check on me and be able to come help me, you know. Make friends, get friends, that make friends with people that you know will check on you. My best friend has a key to my apartment, and she checks on me, and she doesn't hear from me, you know, in a day. She hounds me to death. Number 20, don't invite beggars into or even anywhere near your home. We've talked about this before. I did another video about a guy that did that. Dumb thing to do. Very stupid thing to do. They can case out your joint. They may have family down the street watching them and watching you. You know, they, they when you invite a beggar into your house, you invited somebody to come in and case the joint. Just don't do it. Don't do it, folks. Number 21, don't go to the beach after sundown. If after dark and you go to the restaurants that are down here on the beach, stay near the restaurants on your way out in the lighted areas all the way up to the Malacan. Okay? Don't go walking down on the beach. Oh, what a nice day. I think I'm going for a little stroll on the beach. No, don't do it. Because the homeless people, a lot of homeless, especially Venezuelans, camp out overnight on the beach. That's where they go. They're up in the rocks and they're all, you know, don't go on the beach at night, especially after dark. A lot of times you see the cops down there, they're running people off. They don't want you down there either. Number 22, guys, if you're alone in a bar or restaurant, please be cautious of the friendly girls or girl that want to sit and join you and get to know you and want to have a friendly chat. If you do, you may find yourself at an ATM making a withdrawal or you may find yourself at your apartment having a wonderful time while you've been drugged and being robbed. I have a neighbor that was here once upon a time. He went down to one of the restaurants, bar restaurants on the beach. A couple of girls in there, friendly girls, having a good time. And they got together and started chatting. They see, you know, they're here at his apartment. He's half naked on his bed, thinking he's going to have some whoopee time. And 
there cleaning him out. They took 500 bucks cash from him, took his iPad, took some other valuables and stuff. And the, to, to make matters worse, security here has video of him walking them out of the building when they left with all his stuff. And they drugged him. That's what happened. He got drugged. There's a drug that they like to use here that just makes you totally subservient to whoever's with you. And you're not going to remember most of it. But you'll know it when you go check your bank balance and find out you don't have any cash in the bank anymore because you made an ATM withdrawal and gave it to these friendly people. So don't do that. Number 23, guys, if you're in a bar, don't go to the restroom if you have an unfinished drink on the table. Finish your drink and then go to the bathroom. And if you come back from the restroom and there's a fresh drink for you, accidentally knock it off the table or just tell them you don't want it and go somewhere else. That's for obvious reasons. That More than likely, if there's a drink sitting there, uh, there's a good chance that that drink has been spiked. And next thing you know, you're going to have some new friends. That was number 23. Number 24, the last item. If you use your credit card for a purchase, keep an eye on that card the whole time the clerk is ringing up your purchase. Don't let your credit card go out of sight, okay? I don't know how legitimate that advice is, but I'm just that's something I was told. And, you know, I just make a habit of when I'm using my debit card or my credit card, I know exactly where it is the whole time. Don't, if a clerk takes off and goes to a back room with it or something, I would be really, I would be concerned. You don't know that they're not back there writing down your card number. I, who knows? But keep an eye on your credit card. Okay, so that's it. That was 24 reasons. I hope to get some good out of that. Next week, to Monday, I'm going to do a video, a cooking class at a Spanish language school. And they're going to teach us how to make ceviche. And it's going to be in Spanish. Now, there will be English subtitles, and there's going to be English students there. And I'm going to go snoop in on the class and videotape this class. It's a Spanish school. I did a video on it last week where I interviewed Mr. Buccelli, the owner of Sir Pacifico Bank, or Sir Pacifico Language School. And he invited me to come to this cooking class, so that's what we're going to do. And then I have some videos coming up. I'm going to start doing a series of videos with Marcos at Equisys. Boy, do I have some good stuff for you on that. And that will be in the next couple of weeks, okay? So thanks for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for being a member of my channel, a member of my family. And I will see you on the next one. Okay, ciao, ciao. I'm just gonna scooch in right here if you don't mind. Uh, shh.